On May 28, 1995, the strongest earthquake in the history of Russia occurred on the territory of Sakhalin Island. The total number of victims exceeded 2,000 people. At the same time, at the beginning of 2023, one of the strongest earthquakes in world history occurred in southeastern Turkey and in North Syria. In this video, you will find answers on many questions. Why earthquakes are cyclical? How can the events of almost 30 years ago be related to each other? Which similar natural factors can have the most serious earthquakes in different parts of the Earth? And also what are the similar reasons for saving lives for people who survived? Watch till the end. Before telling you the main story, let's start why earthquakes happen. As you know, there is a basic theory called plate tectonics, thanks to which, it became clear to mankind the continents are moving. Alfred Wegener was the first scientist, who proved it in far 1912. Based on his theory, the continents are huge plates, which are subdivided into smaller plates subplates. These plates move in different parts of the Earth at different speeds, depending to different geological processes. In most cases, seismic or volcanic activity is associated with subplate edges. Geographically, Sakhalin Island is located nearby of Japan coast. This country has suffered greatly from earthquakes and related tsunamis throughout own history. Sakhalin, like Japan, is located near complex boundaries of tectonic plates, which have intricate subplates edges. However, in comparison with Japan, whose islands are directly related to the most dangerous zone in the world, the Ring of Fire Zone, which also called Circumpacific Belt. Sakhalin is located a little to the north, as like away from. Throughout own history, this island has not experienced serious consequences from earthquakes like Japan. Moreover, the population of Japan is many times larger than the practically uninhabited Sakhalin. However, it was 1995, the year of increased seismic activity in the Pacific Ocean. Unfortunately, the Pacific Ring of Fire lit up Sakhalin early May Day as well. Neftogorsk A small settlement of oil workers in the north of the Sakhalin region, in the middle of the forest tundra. It was founded in 1962, at the time when the Russians were already extracting shallow coastal oil resources of the North Sakhalin fields, before they found black gold on the shelf. The settlement was designed for 5,000 inhabitants. During the construction period, it was unofficially named Vostok. In addition to living buildings, also a school, for kindergartens, a cultural center and other infrastructure facilities were built in the town. By May 28, 1995, the permanent population of the settlement was 3,197 people. In addition, some visitors might be in the town. Guests, seconded and temporary workers. On May 27, 1995, the last bell is celebrated all Russian schools. This event is dedicated to high school graduated pupils and one of this was held at local club. However, ironically, for some pupils this holiday was really the last one. On the night between May 27th to May 28th, some of them had not yet had time to go home when the first devastating quake shocks has occurred. It was 1.04 a.m. of local time on the clock, when the town was almost completely destroyed in 17 seconds, erased off the earth face. Andrei Glebov was a policeman of Neftogorsk department. He is also a one of those survivors who helped to dismantle the rubble with his own hands. I stayed in my apartments with my one year old daughter. Then when it got dark, I put she to bed and plunged into the series. I turned off the TV after midnight and went to get a bus. Then I pushed the bed with sleeping daughter out into the corridor. 
because this way I might hear to her better. When I undressed and was ready to get cleaned, the child began to cry. I wrapped myself into a towel, ran up to the bed, took the girl in the arms, and in the next morning a picture tube on my TV is exploding. After that I felt a strong jolt under the feet. After the first push, our house was collapsed. Naked and with a child in my arms, I slid into the street. But I still don't understand which way I did it. Ah, you looking like is going to the nudist beach, they said on the street. But in that day I was not laughing. It was over 10 degrees of Celsius at night. When I began to descend away from the ruins, I heard screams, groans, and a lot of people's cries. Several hours have passed before the first professional rescue teams arrived. The work of the teams was carried out diligently, in several shifts, with the involvement of service dogs and using the so-called hours of silence. The time when all works have been stopped on few minutes, and the rescuers were silent, bypassing the surroundings, in the hope to hear the slightest sounds from under the rubble. Идут сначала так называемые плановые, плановые подготовительные мероприятия. То есть делятся поисковые группы, спасатели, там, спасательные группы, инженерная поддержка и так далее. То есть включается технология. Тогда и сейчас мы ее обладаем, тогда мы, в общем-то, там строили ее. И, в общем-то, я считаю, что Нефтегорск для нас тогда явился экзаменом. И мы сказали после Нефтегорска, да, мы обладаем такой технологией. Sergei Shoigu, now Russia's notorious Minister of Defense Department, at that time he was a Minister of Emergency Situations. According to many political experts, the aspiring minister, who personally coordinated search and rescue operations, earned himself a solid rating for further career advancement, and entered to the list of the most popular Russian ministers of that time. However at that moment, Russia hasn't been in the best economic condition. Not fully recovered after the collapse of the USSR, the country was engulfed in the first Chechen war in 1994. Russia obviously lacked resources to restore own economy, not to mention the multi-million dollar losses because of the earthquake. Those were the crazy 90s. This is the official name of that difficult time in modern Russian historiography. Let's get back to the question of what the common features between the Russian natural disaster in far 1995, and the modern terrible earthquakes in Turkey and Syria in 2023. I propose to move to Turkey for a while. On February 6, 2023, with an interval of 9 hours, two powerful earthquakes occurred in the southeast of Turkey. <laughs> The hypocenter of the first, with a magnitude of 7.8, was located in the Gaziantep region. The hypocenter of the second, with a magnitude of 7.5, was in the Karamanmarash region. So as Dara said, the magnitude uh, 7.8 main truck occurred um, 417 local time this morning. It occurred within a known fault system, the East Anatolian fault system, as a result of uh, faulting at the triple junction between three tectonic plates, the Anatolian, African, and Arabian plates. Um, this is a known actively seismic or seismically active area, uh, tectonically active area, and um, the most recent earthquake to have occurred before the sequence uh, on, on this fault was the 2020 um, magnitude 6.7 earthquake, which occurred to the northeast on the same fault system. So this is a well-documented fault system that is known to have earthquakes and um, aftershocks will continue in the in the days, weeks, months, and years following uh, the sequence. Um, magnitude 7.8 is a relatively large earthquake for a strike slip faulting event, which is, this was. Um, this is among the largest historical strike slip earthquakes that have been observed. And um, again, this is a seismically active area that this faulting occurred as a result of triple junction faulting. More than 50,500 people died in Turkey as a result of the disaster, 
and also 8,476 people died in Syria, with tens of thousands of injured or missing. More than 160,000 buildings collapsed or were badly damaged. After the catastrophe, the ratings of the Turkish government were seriously shaken as well. According to results of the report of scientists from Istanbul University, there are the main reasons for such a huge number of victims. First, the old buildings, and second, the insufficient size of the bearing foundation, which did not correspond to the seismic standards for this region. Turkey doesn't have a state earthquake early warning system, but since 1999 Turkish citizens have been required to pay an earthquake tax to make the new city buildings earthquake resistant. However, this did not was realized. It is claimed more than half of the buildings in the areas affected by the earthquake were built after 2000. Unfortunately, the government has forgotten the words written in blood. Earthquakes is not killing, the buildings is killing. Turkey is located in one of the most active seismic zones in the world. The area in which the earthquake occurred is located at the intersection of three tectonic subplates. Anatolian, Arabian and African. The Arabian plate is moving north, pushing the Anatolian plate to the west. The movement of the plates creates pressure on the fault zones between them. The sudden release of the stored energy of this pressure causes earthquakes. As you can see, the plate boundaries in Turkey are in a complicated interaction, having sharp angles. Moreover, as mentioned earlier, they have multidirectional movements. According to one version, a huge terrestrial force was released as a result of displacement of the more powerful Arabian plate for several meters. However, according to words of many experienced geologists, firstly this is too much, and secondly if the Arabian plate was the cause of earthquake, then undoubtedly Dubai City, with its huge tower, would have shaken very hard as well. Investigating many cases of the most destructive earthquakes in the world, geologists have come to the conclusion that the most catastrophic of them occurs when the hypocenter, in other words the immediate underground earthquake route, is located relatively shallow, only 10 or 15 kilometers below the surface. This type is also called shallow focus earthquake. Exactly right this one was recorded on Sakhalin and in Turkey. Moreover, there are different types of faults, when plates are moving. Scientists have found the most dangerous of them are shear faults, or transform faults, obviously traced in Turkey and Sakhalin. Thanks to them, the plates move not only vertically, but also horizontally, forming longitudinal and destroying transversional seismic waves. Meanwhile, our hero Andrei Glebov, continued to experience according to him, the most terrible night in his life. The nude man went to the police building. I saw a police vehicle smashed the window by my elbow, then found the keys in the cabin, and started the car. Then I also found some clothes inside as well. People began to gather near the police station. Among of them I met neighbors with the car, and, uh, and handed the child over to them. I give my daughter away and said, let her stay with you for a while. Then I have noticed she is covered in blood, but fortunately my neighbor is called me down. He said to me, it's not of her blood, it's your blood. Who? After that I have realized that my whole face is chipped off, cause the slabs were falling, and then I found out that I had three broken ribs. But I walked on adrenaline and didn't feel anything. According to the head of the laboratory of the Institute of Lithosphere, Georgi Kov, 17 large block houses could not withstand the impact and were not intended for earthquake prone areas. In Neftogorsk, all these living houses were completely destroyed. The apartments were built in the 1960s in order to reduce the cost of construction. This is another common feature why in this film we decided to compare this tragedy with the Turkish one. Unfortunately, it seems like not only nature can be involved in a huge number of victims, but the country's authorities as well. Due to the difficult economic situation in Russia, the government decided not to restore Neftogorsk. To raise the settlement to the ground, and to relocate the surviving residents to other towns in Sakhalin region. 
Now, on the site of the Neftogorsk, a memorial plate based with the names of victims. Today, only plates with house numbers carved on them remind of the location of destroyed houses. In the capital of the region, Yuzno Sokolinsk city, in 2000 a small monument for victims of that terrible tragedy was opened. Every year, on the 28th of May, people remember the dead relatives or neighbors by bringing flowers and candles. Today we have only indirect signs of earthquake prediction. However, it is just impossible to predict exactly where, when, and at what time an earthquake will occur. Despite the availability of modern technologies, scientists around the world are still powerless in front of this natural phenomenon. Having answered all the questions, we can summarize the nature is cyclical indeed. Natural disasters such as hurricanes, volcanic eruptions and earthquakes will be repeated again and again as well, because our planet is alive. And we, all people, despite of our power, are still too weak to resist against nature. Perhaps the most important thing all we can do is not to repeat our own mistakes and try to keep people safe before it's not too late.